Hey guys, what is going on? Today I'm going to be reacting to Bleacher Report's top 100 player rankings from the 2019-2020 NBA season. So they have a little note in the beginning here. There are some players that aren't going to be in this ranking because of injury and stuff. So players like Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Oladipo, Klay Thompson, etc. So those are players that you know are going to be excluded from the list. As it says here, also Blake Griffin, they say because, you know, of his knee, Luke Kennard, John Wall, obviously, because he didn't play. All right, so starting out with the just missed the cut section, these are players that obviously aren't in Bleacher Reports. Top 100, in this list we have Harrison Barnes, Mikel Bridges, Brandon Clark. I'm a little surprised about Brandon Clark. I know a bunch of people are super high on him. Uh, Goran Dragic, Doran Finney-Smith, Joe Harris, George Hill, Rajon Holmes. Royce O'Neal, Norman Powell, Julius Randle, JJ Redick, Josh Richardson, and Colin Sexton, and Tristan Thompson. Okay, so now we're in the top 100. Coming in at number 100, we have Dante DiVincenzos. Um, a little surprised he is number 100 over some of those guys who just missed the cut, but he's not a bad player. At number 99, we have TJ Warren. Number 98, we have Derek White. And then at number 97, we have Duncan Robinson. Which is awesome because, you know, like, he came from a D3 school earlier on in his career, so that's pretty cool. I just think his story is cool. Number 96, we have OG. And then, at number 95 through 91, we have next. So, number 95 is Karis LeVert. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty surprised about this. Nuts fans are not going to be happy about this. Because Karis LeVert is pretty good, and I'm not sure why he's 95. I don't, like, am I, I feel like I'm missing something. I don't think he should be 95. And I'm a Knicks fan. You can see my shirt. I'm a Knicks fan. And I don't think Karis LeVert should be anywhere near 95. But okay. Okay, moving on. Um, uh, Davis Bertans at number 94. Danny Green comes in at number 93. I don't know. I feel like Danny Green could be higher too. Marcus Morris comes in at... 92. At number 91, we have Mitch, Mitchell Robinson. Um, I feel like he could have been higher. Um, listen, mark my words, he's going to be much higher on this list next year. He's going to start shooting some jump shots next year, he says, so watch, watch out, NBA. Watch out for Mitchell Robinson. 90 through 86. So at number 90, we got Gasol. Then we have Clint Capella at 89. Then we have Andre Drummond at 88. And Hassan Whiteside at 87. Lou Williams at 86. I feel like Lou Williams could be higher, all right? I feel like he could be higher. Um, it's hard to think about like who should be higher later on the list because there's a hundred spots. So it's kind of hard to think about like where this player should be when you're going backwards, if that makes sense. I don't know, because it's a big list. So it's like, well, I feel like he could be higher, but then it's like you see, I guess, players' names you forgot about when you keep going through the list. I don't know if that made sense, but yeah, just picturing in your head where players should be when it's a hundred players is kind of hard to just do in your head. Okay, that didn't make sense. All right, so 85 through 81 here. At number 85, we got Jared Allen. Yeah, he, he's played pretty well, um, definitely, you know, is going to take more steps, uh, still a young player. At 84, we got Robert Covington. 83, we got Kelly Oubre Jr., Tsunami Poppy, Wave Poppy. I mean, we all love him, right? Then at 82, we got Miles Turner. Um, I don't know, I feel like he's someone who could also be higher. I did even got Al Horford. Yeah, that, I guess, makes sense for this season. Um, 80 through 76. We got Tim Hardaway Jr. So, funny story about Tim Hardaway Jr. really quick. Um, when he was on the Knicks, me and my friend were pretty big fans of his. And we'd always just, you know, call him Tim. And that year that the Christmas jerseys had just the first name on the back, I got her a Tim Hardaway jersey for her birthday, and it just said Tim on the back, and I thought it was just, like, the coolest thing ever. It's just a jersey that says Tim on the back. That's awesome! At 79, we have Evan Fournier. At 78, we have Draymond Green. I mean, like, that makes sense for this year, but it's just kind of crazy to think that Draymond Green is the 78th best player in the NBA right now, according to Bleacher Report, you know? Like, that Warriors dynasty, 
this year, you know, wasn't wasn't their year, obviously. It's just kind of crazy to think about that. Then, at number 77 overall, we have Joe Ingles. Then at number 76, we have Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, like, I feel like I would put Jaron Jackson Jr. higher, but I feel like I also have, like, not a bias, but because he's younger, I'm thinking about potential more, too, and that's not what this list is, but I always... You know, feel like he has a lot of potential, which he does. I mean, he was super young even for his draft class. But, um, yeah, okay, moving on. Uh, 75 through 71. At 75, we have Jonathan Isaac. Then we have PJ Tucker. Um, like, I guess that's okay. Um, then we have Aaron Gordon at 73. And Christian Wood at 72. Wood is another player, I think, who's going to be higher on this list after next season. At 71, we have Patrick Beverly. I feel like he could be a little bit higher, too. 70 through 76, we have DeJounte Murray at 70. Then we have Buddy Heald at 69. I don't know. He could be higher, too, I feel. Then at 68, we have Dennis Schroeder. 67, we have Valanchunas. And at 66, we have Devontae Graham. So I'm going to try to move a little bit quicker because this is a long list. So 65 through 61, we have Derrick Rose at 65. He's someone I know should be higher on this list. Like, he's been playing pretty well. Um, I don't think he should be in the 60s at all. 64, we have Bogdanovich. Then at 63, we have Tobias Harris, um, which I guess, I don't know, makes sense. Then, at 62, we have Will Barden. At 61, we have Ricky Rubio. Um, I feel like he's the first guy I'm going to say should maybe be a little bit lower. <laughs> no offense, Ricky Rubio. But, okay. Um, at 60, we have Derek Favors. At 59, we have Montrezl Harrell. And then, at 58, we have Brooke Lopez. 57, we have Steven Adams. I feel like Steven Adams should be higher because I was listening to this podcast and a few NBA players were saying how hard it is to go up against Steven Adams just because he's so strong. I think it was Jaron Jackson Jr. that was actually saying it. And I think Jackson Hayes was on the podcast too and they were just saying, um, I think it was Jaron Jackson Jr. specifically who was saying it though. Don't quote me on that. Um, that, you know, Steven Adams is just so strong and, you know, difficult to go against. Then at 56, we have Lonzo Ball. Hmm. He can maybe be a little bit higher up. He's been playing better in New Orleans, you know. I think the trade was good for him. Maybe he could be a little bit higher. 55 through 51, we have Serge Ibaka at 55. Marcus Smart at 54. Marcus Smart could be a little bit higher. He's a player I actually do like watching, you know, a do it all type of guy. Um. Yeah, it says it right here, does all the little things guy. Um, yeah, I feel like he could be a little bit higher. Then we have DeMar DeRozan at 53. Um, that's a little bit surprising, but I don't know, you know, since he was traded. To San Antonio and all of that. Okay, moving on. At 52, we have Paul Millsap. At 51, we have Kevin Love. Yeah, who's still a Cleveland Cavalier. Um, 50. Okay, now we're doing single ones. We have LaMarcus Oldridge at 50. I don't know, maybe he could be a little lower, honestly. That's just my opinion. At 49, we have DeAndre Aiden. He's someone who's so underrated, I feel. Like, we don't really talk about him. And wasn't he averaging a double-double, like, this season or maybe last season? One season or something, he averaged double-double for a certain amount of time. And I saw that, and I was like, wait, why are we talking about him? Maybe it's because of the market in Phoenix? And I was like, what? This guy's, like, really good. I'm no one's really talking about him. Let me see. Does it say? Um, yeah, he averaged 19 points and 12 rebounds after his suspension this year. See? He needs to be talked about more. He could be higher on this list. And he's still pretty young. Um, yeah, I feel like he could be higher. At number 48, we got Malcolm Brogdon. Okay, now we're getting more writing. At number 47, we have Jamal Murray. That's interesting. I don't know. I feel like Jamal Murray could be higher. I feel like he really could. I don't know. Maybe I'm overrating him, though, because I just saw something that said, like, Jamal Murray's overrated. And I was like, I don't know, but maybe he is. I don't know. Okay, moving on. Spencer Dinwiddie. So this is interesting because Karis LeVert was rated so low, and I know Spencer Dinwiddie had a good season this past season, 
but like I don't feel like there should be that big of a gap between Din Dinwiddie and Levert, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, like, yes, Dinwiddie had a really good season, but, like, Karis Levert isn't that bad, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just, I think Karis Levert should have been ranked higher. D'Lo at 45. Mmm, I don't like that. I don't like that. D'Lo should be higher, in my opinion. I don't like that. Zach Levine at 44. See, I'll put D'Lo over Zach Levine. You know? Gordon Hayward at 43. Okay. Fred Van Vliet at 42. I would still put D'Lo over Fred Van Vliet. I'm just being like, who would I put over D'Lo? John Collins at 41. I don't know. John Collins could possibly be a little higher. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm saying so many players could be a little higher. That's like, where are you going to put all these players on the list? You know what I mean? There's only so many spots in the top 20, in the top 30, all of that. That's what, I don't know. I, I may, I may not be making sense right now. It may not mathematically add up. At number 40, we have Eric Bledsoe. Like, again, another player I would put D'Lo ahead of. But maybe that's just my personal opinion. I don't know. Number 39, we have KP. Like, he was injured, obviously. Um, it will be interesting to see how he performs in the bubble. But yeah, I, I, like, I, I guess that makes sense. I wouldn't really know where to rank him because of the injuries and stuff. It gets complicated. Gallo at 38. Then we have... Vucevic at 40, 47, 37, and at 36 we have De'Aaron Fox. Like, mm, I'd probably take De'Aaron, I don't know, would you pick De'Aaron Fox over D'Lo? I don't know, I guess Bleacher Report would. That's like a good question, I feel. Like, who would, who's the better point guard to you, D'Lo or De'Aaron Fox? Let me know in the comments down below. At number 35, we have Sabonis. So Ja comes in at number 34, and like I think Zion has to be on this list. There's no way Bleacher Report didn't put Zion on this list, but in my opinion, Ja's the rookie of the year. Um, like I don't know how much weight these last few games are going to hold for rookie of the year, but I think, I just think Ja is rookie of the year to me. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where Zion is on this list, but I think Ja could be higher on this list, for sure. Next, we have CJ McCollum. I feel like this is a good spot for him. It makes sense. Number 32, we have Donovan Mitchell. This is someone I would put higher, and I don't think I'm being biased. He is one of my favorite players in the league, but I think he should be higher than 32. You know what I mean? I think he needs to be higher than 32. I don't think he's not like, in the top 30 players in the league. I mean, I know he's 32 on here, but I think he needs to be at least in the top 30. At number 31, we have Shea Gilgis Alexander. I like Shea, but I would rank Donovan Mitchell ahead of Shea, if you know what I mean. I think Shea's a really good player and is going to become an even better player, but, you know, I would just put Donovan Mitchell over him in these rankings as of right now. At number 30, we have Jalen Brown, and this is another player I don't think should be ranked in front of Donovan Mitchell. I just... Don't think so. I think Donovan Mitchell should be in this top 30. All right, let's see who else is in the top 30. So yeah, Zion Williamson comes in at number 29. And I know a lot of people will probably be upset over this and be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. and I feel like there's a lot of like Zion haters out there now because the media is hyping him up so much, I guess. You know, even though he only played a few games and everyone's like, why you can't rank him so high? He only played a few games. Why are you ranking him so high and doing all this? I mean, I guess they're just like, yeah, he played those few games, but he played really well, so let's just assume he would perform that way in the rest of the games as well. Um, I don't know. Like, he shouldn't be number 29, but, you know, that's, that's how it's been going with Zion. You know what I mean? Everyone knows what I mean if you follow the NBA. Sorry if this camera angle looks different, guys. The battery on my camera died, so I had to charge it, but I got a snack while I was charging. A Rice Krispie Treat. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, okay, so back to the list. Brandon Ingram comes in at number 28. He's had a really good season, so I think this is a good spot for him. This was kind of his breakout year. At number 27, we have Devin Booker, and I feel like this is a little low for him. I feel like he could be in the top 20, so yeah, I mean, 
he's just a great scorer. Then at number 26, we have Bam. Uh, yeah, he's another guy who's had like a breakout year, a pretty good year, or a really good year, I should say. So this is a good spot for him. Then at number 25, we have Drew Holiday. Um, yeah, an underrated guy. I, th I think this is a good spot for him. Then at number 24, we have Kemba Walker. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess number 24 is fine for Kemba. So this is kind of surprising to me. At number 23, we have Trey Young, and I expected Bleacher Report to put him higher, and I think he should be higher on this list. Somewhere maybe in the top 20, even maybe the top 15. You know, he can score. I mean, he can really, obviously, as we all know, shoot the ball from anywhere. Really has that limitless range, so I think he, he's got to be higher on this list. Then at number 22, we have Russell Westbrook. Okay, so, um, Russ has been having a pretty good year. Like, the small ball is working for him, and even after they traded Clint Capella and really went to, like, microscopic ball, he's been playing well. Um, I don't know. Like, who who's ahead of Russell Westbrook is my question. I guess that's what we're about to find out, because I don't... Ooh, Russ is not in the top 20. I don't like that. Okay. At number 21, we have Bradley Beal. Um, someone who could probably be a little bit higher as well. Then, at 20, we have Kyle Lowry. Yeah, like, I think Bradley Beal and, um, and Russell Westbrook should be above Lowry. Definitely Westbrook by a few players, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Kyle Lowry should not be ahead of both those guys. I don't know. I, sorry. No disrespect. 19, Kyrie Irving again. Bradley Beal should be in front of him for this season. Russell Westbrook should be ahead of him. Kyrie barely played. I know he had a really good first game. What was that? That first game that he missed the game winning shot. That sounds like such shade, but it's not. I'm, you know what I'm talking about. Like where he did the crazy move or maybe he fell. We don't know. He had a bunch of points in that game. Um, but you know, he was hurt. And like, I don't know, the Nets weren't that good when he was playing either. So Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook should definitely be in front of him. I can't believe they put Kyrie Irving in front of Russell Westbrook for this season. They literally put Kyrie Irving in front of Russell Westbrook for this season. When Irving was hurt the majority of the year. Okay, so this is another one where I'm just like, what? Like, what? I don't... You rank Donovan Mitchell that low and put Rudy Gobert this high? I... What? I don't know. No. Russell Westbrook should definitely be ahead of him. Russell Westbrook should probably be ahead, a lot, be ahead of a lot of these players that we're about to see. What? Siakam. Okay, Siakam deserves to be in the top 20, definitely. Paul George, 16. That makes sense as well. Ben Simmons, 15. That's fine. That makes sense. That makes sense too. Okay. Cat at 14. Yeah. Yeah. I think I put... Yeah. I don't know. Maybe a little bit lower. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, like in this range, maybe more at like number 20 for Cat. Chris Paul, this is a little bit surprising. Like he's having a good year and OKC is doing really well. Like, I guess compared to what the expectations were, like, I don't know. Like, Russ? I'm just thinking about Russ so much now. Like, Russ. Russ should have definitely been in the top 20. Maybe even the top... Definitely the top 15. Russ should have been in the top 15. But, yeah, okay. Joel Embiid at 12. Okay. I guess. Jason Tatum comes in at number 11, and he's been having a great, great year. So, he definitely deserves to be at least ranked number 11 on this list. Coming in at number 10, we have Chris Middleton. Another guy, Russ, should definitely be ranked ahead of. Um, like, Milwaukee is good, and like, him and Giannis together, like, they're great, but I don't know if Chris Middleton is a top 10 player in the NBA. Actually, it's not that I don't know. I know he's not a top 10 player in the NBA right now. I'm sorry, but he's not. I'm sorry. No disrespect to him. Again, I'm not. No disrespect to him, but I just don't believe he's a top 10 player in the NBA right now. At number 9, we have Jimmy Butler. I think this is a good spot for Jimmy. Then we have Anthony Davis at number 8. Ooh. 
I thought he would be a little bit higher. Maybe even top five. But okay. We're close to the top five. Number seven, we have Damian Lillard, yeah. Lillard, you know, always is underrated, but I think I think this is a good spot for him. So at number six, we have Jokic, and this is interesting because I always forget how good Jokic is, just in my head, but I would still put Lillard and AD in front of him. Like, I think AD is better than him, and so is Lillard. So, ah, Jokic at six, I don't agree with that. Top five, here we go. Luka Doncic at number five, okay. This makes sense to me, he's definitely in my top five. I actually had him ranked number four a couple weeks ago, and people were like, why do you have him at number four? I don't know. But Doncic at five. Makes perfect sense. I'm like losing my voice. James Harden at four. Interesting. So I had him like right outside my top five, but I could see how you would put him in the top five. This, this, uh, this makes sense. At number three, we got Kawhi Leonard. This makes perfect sense. I feel like so many people have him ranked number three. This makes... Perfect sense, like I said. That's perfect. Then at number two, we got LeBron James. And number one is obviously going to be Giannis Antetokounmpo. Um, you know, the top three I think is perfect. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had LeBron number one and Giannis number two. Uh, and I was like on the fence about who to put number one, so I just went with LeBron. But I think Giannis is number one right now. So top three was great of this list. Other parts were definitely questionable. It's interesting though because when you're going through this list, you know, from number 100 to 1, you think like, oh, this guy should be higher, oh, this guy should be higher, but it's hard to like actually think where they should go because there's so many guys on this list and, you know, you just forget about some other guys when you're like, oh, this guy should be higher and this guy should be higher. You know, it, it would definitely be difficult to write out a list like this. I mean, 100 players, that's a lot of players to rank. All right, guys, that's all I got for this video. Make sure you drop a like, comment down below, and subscribe. Peace out.